After our sermon on Sunday, I thought it might be interesting to some of you to let you know about some of the prayer books that are out there. We talked about how liturgy works as a sort of scaffold to our prayer life, that it gives us guidance and ensures that when we set out to pray, we actually, we actually do pray. But a few of you asked me after the teaching, hey, like what sort of prayer books can we use? What sort of scaffolds can we put in place? So I thought, let's just take a couple of moments and tell you about some of the books that I use. There are more out there than just these, but my hope is that this might get you started. Uh, first one that I use is the classic. This is the Book of Common Prayer. Uh, it goes back hundreds of years. This is the 1979 edition. Um, it's not just a great year because it was the year I was born. I'm joking. Uh, it's because this, this is the last time they did a full revision of it. The Book of Common Prayer isn't always the easiest place to start when it comes to prayer books. It has everything in it. It has guides to read through the Bible in a couple of years, to read through the Psalms on a monthly or bi-monthly basis. It has the lectionary readings in it for every, every single day for the next three years. It also has services from you know, how to lead a baptism right through to how to become a bishop. So it can be a little bit more than most people, than most people need, but it also has morning prayer, evening prayer, uh, Compline and these sort of things in it. Uh, it's the sort of prayer book that, sort of, that kind of, I would say, frames all of the other prayer books out there, which is why you'll hear people talk about the Book of Common Prayer quite regularly. You can get versions of it online uh, and versions of it on like the venite.app, which will take you through the prayers every day and, and help you on those fronts. As much as I love this book, I don't think it's where I'd recommend that most people start because it's a little intense. It comes in a couple of versions as well. Like the, there's this, uh, the New Zealand Book of Prayer, a little bit easier to engage with, uses some really creative language that sort of drops you into the text in a very different way. But it's still uh, a prayer book in the same style as the Book of Common Prayer. So can you can quickly get lost and I'd hate for you to get discouraged in trying to make sense of these. So moving into a couple of things that are more interesting. For, for you if you're not used to prayer books or breveries as they're sometimes known. Uh, this is called Common Prayer. This is put together by Shane Claiborne and a few other people. They call it a liturgy for ordinary radicals. The, the sort of focus of this prayer book is definitely leading towards issues of justice, uh, issues of, of the rightness that God wants to do in the world. But it, as you'll see in here, works you through on, on a day-by-day -day basis. So for each day of the year, it's going to give you some readings, some prayers, uh, some reflections and even something to focus on in your prayers that day. I know a lot of friends that this was the first prayer book that they got. It resonated with their heart for justice, but also gave them the scaffold and the frame to pray every single day. If you wanted something which works as a little more, I might call it as a gateway to the Book of Common Prayer, um, Phyllis Tickle's book, The Divine Hours, it's a three book set. They're about the same size as this, uh, each of the other two. This is the one for autumn and winter time. And, and again, she gives you uh, morning, noon, evening, and Compline prayers for every single day of the year. And that allows you, if you want, to pray the four offices of prayer, uh, which is a very long-standing tradition within the church that we pray four different times during the day. But again, what do we say? How do we know what to say? What Tickle does in this book is combines kind of loved elements of the Book of Common Prayer and other pieces of liturgy and hymns so that all you need to do any day is just open it up at the day that you're praying to the time that you're praying and follow the instructions. Uh, there's these three books that you can buy and that would cover you for the whole year. But what Phyllis also did, and this might be where I recommend everybody starts, is she created a pocket edition of these three books into one tiny little book called The Divine Hours. And this gives you the prayers that you need for each day for the whole week. Uh, and I would say as a sort of first step into prayer books, this is a beautiful place to start because it allows you to sort of not worry too much about what you're going to say, but lean into a guided liturgical prayer life that ensures that you have the right scaffolding. That when you sit down, it's not a case of, well, I don't even know what to pray because you can be guided by this. And I would encourage you, pick up something like this, be guided by it in liturgical prayers and use that to launch into then the things that you need to pray on any given day. There's other books out there. Everybody will end up having their favorites but that might be a helpful place for you.